Welcome back. I'm Lisa with Ivy Lane Interiors and today's project is a really cool piece. And you can see I have a little bit of a secret here. I have a key and it opens up to reveal a bar area or I guess it could be a safe. I um, picked it up at a local estate sale and it's in pretty good shape overall. Beautiful wood but you can see the top has quite a bit of damage. And then I also had look like maybe some water damage on the base um, on both sides. So I decided first I'm just going to kind of put some denatured alcohol on it and just kind of test the finish and see what I'm dealing with. So denatured alcohol is a great little cleaner, but it also kind of helps me kind of assess um, what the finish is because I didn't think I'm going to need to refinish the entire piece. But as I kind of was cleaning it and scraping it, I realized, okay, I'm going to really need to do a refinish on this. So I decided to go ahead and take off the corner brackets and I'm just going to refinish the top. I wasn't sure how extensive it was going to be to get this finish off. So I, I always like to start with the sand, kind of give me a kind of assess it to see, okay, how much can I get off with just sanding? You can see even with using 80 grit, it wasn't coming off very good. So I went ahead. The next step is I'm going to break out my orbital sander. I'm going to give it a really good sanding. And then I'm going to go in with my carbide scraper and I'm really going to scrape off that finish. There's several different ways you can remove finishes. You can sand it off with a lower grit sandpaper. You can use a stripper. Um, I've used a variety of tools, but in my scraper is just really my favorite because it's quick and it's obviously non-toxic. And so it's just, it's just easy to use. And so I don't always use it, but this particular finish really did well just using that carbide scraper. Um, it is a bit of a workout, but it's just fast and I just like it. But you can easily use a stripper as well. But honestly, since it's a but honestly, since it's a flat surface, that's where the carbide scraper really works well. If I have a lot of intricate curves and spindles and details, well, then I'm going to definitely be rich, reaching for my stripper. But when I have just a flat surface like this, it's quick, easy, and um, I don't have to expose myself to any kind of chemicals or anything.
So to get in some of the detail areas, I just like to wrap my sandpaper around, in this case, just a little Bondo scraper. It's a flexible area to kind of get into those little grooves. And then I also have some sanding contours that I do. So I usually just match it up with whatever profile I'm sanding. It's a wonderful little product. They're pretty cheap and they, they match all kinds of variety of profiles. So it's a great little, and I do have it linked in the description, but it's a great little tool to add to your um, toolbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand through the grits. I usually start at 80 and then I'll vacuum off the dust and then I'll go up to 120 vacuum off the dust again, then go up to 180. Then I'm gonna pause and I'm gonna decide how I'm going to finish it. I like to give a final clean with a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and water. It just kind of gets any of the extra contaminants um, off the surface. So for the sides, I'm not gonna do a full refinish. I'm just gonna do a toning. So I am giving it a sand with a high grit sandpaper. So this is probably like a 220. I'm just kind of knocking off the um, shine. And then I'm gonna use plastic wood. You can see I've got some damage along the bottom and I'm just gonna fill in those areas with plastic wood. After I do my sand, then I'm gonna clean it back off. This is the other side, and I have to fill some of those areas in. You'll see I also have a little bit of loose veneer, so you can't just fill over that. You need to go ahead and glue it down. Love these little um, wood syringes, because I can put the cap back on and it doesn't dry out. So I just put some uh, wood glue in there, and then I'll tape it, and I will clamp it down, and then I'll come back after that and do my repairs. So once the plastic wood has dried, I'm gonna come back with sandpaper and I'm going to sand it smooth. So for the toning process, I'm just using gel stain right over what I just sanded and cleaned off. Um, this is in the color Nutmeg. It is by General Finishes. This is going to cover most of the sides and the back. And then I'll come back with a darker color and I'm gonna have to kind of color correct some of those areas that I had to apply plastic wood to. But you see, I'm, I'm not refinishing the entire thing. I didn't take it down to raw. You can just simply put the gel stain right over it. This is called toning and you're just going to tone the wood. The process of sanding it with the high grit um, sandpaper and then cleaning it with the denatured alcohol and water that preps the surface to be able to take the gel stain and then I will go back at the end and I'll reseal it but it's a fabulous way to refinish without completely stripping the wood down to raw.
So for the areas that I had to apply the plastic wood to, I'm going to use a slightly darker color of gel stain called Hickory um, by Verithane. And I'm just going to apply it with a chip brush. So I'm just going to kind of work it in. I'm just blending it. You'll see it just takes a long time. I put it on, I pull it back off and I put a little bit more on and I put it back on. So you'll just see as I'm doing this, I'm just blending it in and it just takes some time. It'll dry. I'll do another layer. You'll see at the end, um, it just, you, I finally get it, but sometimes you just have to kind of work it. I like the chip brush because it can kind of mimic the wood grain. It has a little bit of an open pattern. So I'll use it flat and then you'll see I'll turn it on its side and I'll, and I'll use it that way too. You can use a fan brush, um, but you see I'm putting it on and then I'm um, taking it off a little bit on my rag because I want it to be dry to kind of blend it in. It just takes practice. So the more that you do it, the more that you kind of mess with it, um, it'll blend in. You can also use a blending kit. So I'll um, link it in the in the description. But there's also areas if you just can't quite get it with the gel stain, they have little tubes that you can use that are all different colors and you can blend it. Um, you're basically using acrylic paints and you're just painting on that wood grain. The cool thing about um, gel stain is it's not a penetrating stain. It just um, sits on the top of the wood. So you can use it to fill in any areas that have damage. So you can see these are the areas that I use the plastic wood on. And so I know this doesn't look great right now, but as I just kind of work it and blend it, and um, over time, as I keep doing this, it's gonna blend in to the rest of the body. Okay, now I'm ready for the top. I'm going to apply a sanding sealer by Verithane. And then after I apply that, then I'm going to let it dry for an hour. And then I'm going to come back with the gel stain and apply it. So I'm using Nutmeg. This is by General Finishes. And I had some problems with it. Um, I don't know if it was the weather. I was working in 100 degree weather. And I don't really know. I had another piece I was doing at the same time that I had some problems with as well. And I don't know if it was the extreme heat and humidity, but it just wasn't going on smooth. So it should have been fine with the sanding sealer. Um, it should have gone on smooth, but you can see it's just blotchy in a few areas. See how blotchy that is? So I, I, I 
just kept going and I kept trying to, okay, I'll try another coat. I'll try to kind of keep blending it. And you can see, I just keep trying to work it and blend it. And sometimes that helps, you know, sometimes you can get the look you're wanting because again, gel stain, it just sits on top. So sometimes you can really work it, but it was drying so fast that I just couldn't get it to work. So I broke open the mineral spirits and I took it all off. So after I took it all off, I went back with um, the Hickory Color by Varathane. You can see right there that area on the left. I don't know why. It just kept grabbing the stain. It should be sitting on top. Shouldn't be grabbing it. But for some reason, it just kept grabbing and the, more of the gel stain than I wanted. So I'm trying to take it off with mineral spirits. I'm just using just my rag and I'm trying to remove it from that one little area right there. I don't know why it grabbed it so much in that particular area. So I am a perfectionist. Uh, I'm not happy with it. So I am going to sand this off and I'm going to try again. So I'm going to sand through the grits again. I'm starting with 120 and then I'll go up to 180 and I'm going to reprep it and just try to get a smoother surface. So you can see how much I'm sweating. Um, I do think the extreme heat played a big part in the problems that I was having. So I decided to go ahead and do the sanding sealer again. So I'm gonna put that down and then I'm gonna come back with my gel stain again. And now that I have a nice clean surface, it's doing a little bit better. It's not grabbing it quite as much. So I wasn't completely pleased with it. I decided to go ahead and use the toning process on the top. This is a procedure I did on another piece I was working on at the time too. I'll link a card to it. It's the John Whittacombe set. I had to do the same thing on the top. 
It's a really cool technique that I just started using. You mix about 10 to 20% of dye stain into your top coat. And it's basically a tinted top coat. And what it does is it just completely gives you a beautiful um, finish. And so you're toning the wood, you're making it all the same color. Now you have to be careful because you are applying a color. And so if you, if you get kind of heavy handed in an area, that area is going to be a little darker. So there's a bit of a learning curve to it, but you can see it's kind of dark. So um, the first coat went on a little light and then I went a little bit darker. You'll see the second pass. It looks a little light here just because um, of the lighting. Um, and then I did, um, once it dries, it dries darker. And then I did a nice little, then I just did a high, uh, did a sanding. And then on this shot, you can see a little, a little bit better it's a little bit darker and you're it's almost like you're just spraying on stain but it's just that stain mixed in with your top coat so it be it, it's a beautiful finish it's a great way to um, smooth out your surface if you have an uneven wood finish it's a wonderful way to just tone everything and make everything smooth So for the hardware, I like to boil water and then I add some vinegar to it. I don't boil it on the stove because it's such a strong um, scent and my family is like, please, what are you doing? So I just put my hardware in it and then I take it and I put it in my garage and I just let it set there. Sometimes I let it set overnight. I'll let it set for a couple days. But once it does that, you can see that I just use a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend and I use a like a scotch right pad and you it just all that tarnish just comes right off. So this is real brass and it, and it really did polish up beautifully. You can see the before and the after right there. But I did the hinges, I did the corner brackets and it's lovely. To reattach the corner brackets, I like to hold my little pin nails with needle nose pliers, and then I just use my hammer just to um, hammer that in. If, if you scuff up the brass at all, you can just apply a little brasso to it um, with a cloth, and then that will polish it right back up. To reattach my doors, I usually like to start with one screw, maybe at the top, and then I alternate it and I go and I put one at the bottom, and then I'll come back up and do another one at the top. That way it doesn't put too much stress on the hinge. I love this little ratcheting screwdriver. Obviously, sometimes drills are easy, easier to use, but sometimes it puts a little bit too much stress on these small screws. That's why this little ratcheting screwdriver um, works so well.
okay let's look back at the before that top was pretty trashed but overall we was in pretty good shape I had a little bit of damage on the bottom but you know I love Burlwood and I love brass accents and it had so much potential so after a little bit of love and a little bit of trial and error here is the final product didn't it turn out great I love it it's so beautiful can you believe that top turned out so good beautiful took a couple trial and errors but I got it and um, polished up all that brass and wow I think it's beautiful you'll be able to see here the repairs that I did on the bottom they blend in beautifully you can't even tell that they were there and so it's amazing what you can do with a little bit of gel stain but I don't know tell me what you think do you like it are you glad that I kept it wood? I'm glad I didn't paint it. <laughs> see, you can't even see those repairs I did. I just love that burl wood. I wish I could have kept it, but I didn't. I did sell it. I sold it for $550, and the guy's gonna use it as a safe. He's not using it as a liquor cabinet. He liked it because it had the, the key and that he could lock it. So um, I ended up buying it for 100, um, sold it for 550, had all of the materials, but this was a good one. Tell me what you think.